Doug, I saw you nodding several times. What was Brett saying that was resonating with, because you serve, so yeah. you know, that was resonating with you in terms of strategy of the IDF? Well, the biggest thing that was resonating with me was actually, as he was looking at this, it was a slow and methodical. Even pulling up the reserves, remember the reserves had to be trained up. They had, they're had they different than our reserve forces, so they have to be trained up to get ready to go back in. So that methodical process, that's why they just didn't go in immediately. And for all the uh, discussion from the Biden administration about taking it slowly, well, that's exactly what they're doing, and they're making sure that they go through it. Here's the interesting part that I'm going to look at for the next few, uh, few days is not necessarily what's going on in Gaza, which we know is happening there, Hamas there, is what will happen with Iran and the iran back military groups and also Lebanon Hezbollah. That is the one right now that you have mm -hmm. to worry about because mm -hmm. they have said they will do a, a proportional response, whatever that means to them. So if all of a sudden they come across that northern border, you'll see a complete shift in this war. It'll go from Gaza to there. Gaza right. will be maintained while you have to face off that. Well, and Iran technically, Morgan, would have more control over that situation because they know that Hezbollah has up to 150,000 rockets that they can hit that very city that Brett Velikovich was in, Tel Aviv, they can yeah. hit Jerusalem, they can hit wherever they want uh, in the, the nation of Israel. My question is though, where is Saudi Arabia? Where is Jordan? Where is Qatar? For that matter, you know, any Arab nation nearby that has yeah. said that they want to have some kind of relations with us and we want to have some kind of relations with them, Egypt. Egypt kicked a lot of Palestinians out already, so we sort of know where they are, but they are sending aid. Why don't they take care of their own Arab nation people? Why we, don't they do that? We saw this for a decade in the Syrian civil war. Uh, when we had, you know, millions of Syrians that were injured, that were displaced, that were killed by Assad. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting to see these worldwide protests for the Palestinians. Um, I want to know where all these people were for a decade of Syrian civil war. I want to know where they Assad are now. Was doing, yeah. So I think there's something really interesting going on with Saudi Arabia right now. Um, MBS, the crown prince, is not, you, you know, he was very much working towards trying to get peace and recognition with Israel, essentially entering the Abraham Accords or something even bigger. Um, he has not uh, dismissed that. He has not said, you know, there's realities of the situation on the ground, but all indications is that Saudi is going to possibly move forward. Also, it's been reported publicly that some of the missiles that the Houthis, which are in Yemen, again, sponsored by Iran, were launching, were actually shot down from Saudi Arabia. That means essentially Saudi was protecting Israel. Mm -hmm. And in Al Arabiya, the woman who grilled Mishal, the former Hamas leader, mm -hmm. uh, that Al Arabiya is owned by Saudi. Saudi, the way that Qatar owns Al, Al, Al Jazeera. So what we're seeing uh, here is that Saudi is very much leading and saying, I, we're not happy with Hamas. We're not seeing the protests in Saudi Arabia uh, that you're seeing in the rest well, of the Arab Different world. country. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about protests in Saudi Arabia for a minute. That's going to look a lot Arab different Spring. than here. It was not fun. But, but that's yeah. really interesting. That, and that's important to note, too. Look at where what Saudi Arabia is doing is not happening, like Qatar, where that $6 billion in sanction money that Iran thought it could get its hands on yeah. uh, is frozen temporarily. And Mashal, the former uh, leader of Hamas that you just mentioned, is parked right is there? there at the diaspora offices for Hamas because they need good communication. Lisa? Well, I just look at this, and I think Israel doesn't just have a right to defend itself. It has a right to eliminate and eradicate Hamas and this terrorist threat. I mean, you had 1,400 Israelis slaughtered in cold blood on October 7th. That's equivalent to 48,000 Americans in a single day, 16 times what we saw on 9-11. And the response is maddening. And you have the Biden administration slow walking Israel's ground invasion, telling them to aid their enemy when we know that money is going to Hamas. They have a $350 million annual military budget. You, you have people still talking about a two-state solution ceasefire? When you had Hamas terrorists cut a pregnant woman's mm. stomach open, take the baby mm. out, stab the baby, and then shoot the woman in the head. And, no. and, and you're talking about, you know, some sort of uh, reserved <laughs> response from Israel? I mean, it, it is actual insanity. Israel has every right to eradicate and destroy Hamas, and they should absolutely do that. And if they don't, what do you think the response will be then? Oh, well. How do you think Hezbollah will read that? How do you think these other oh, terrorist groups will I read it? How will Iran read it? Well, Iran backs all of them, exactly. so they'll do exactly what Iran tells them to do. Emily. You know, Trey mentioned warnings 
earlier, and Israeli leaders are warning that this could be a very long war. And mm -hmm. I think um, the undercurrent of everything that you all are saying is the fact that they, this will last a very long time. Just this weekend, we know that proxies launched a drone attack at U.S. forces in uh, Syria, and thank goodness it essentially crashed without injuries. But I think this is a marathon, not a sprint. And keep in mind that, as we know now, the U.S. is prepared to support a humanitarian pause in fighting to free hostages. And the Hamas leader said over the weekend he, he would release hostages if Israel would release Palestinian hostages, to which the IDF said, this is psychological terror. Yeah. Nothing yeah. is ever on the table. So, you know, the, the massive overlay to me is the patent dishonesty emanating from Hamas and the actual uh, mm -hmm. toxicity that sort of plagues this entire situation. So as we analyze, um, there's no truth really to be analyzing other than knowing that the enemy has a language of lies only. Moving on to this now, anti-Israeli sentiment reaching a terrifying new low yesterday. Chilling footage shows an airport in Russia's heavily Muslim Dagestan region being stormed by an angry and hateful mob. Some carrying banners with anti-Semitic slogans, rushing onto the tarmac and searching for a flight of Jews and Israelis that landed from Tel Aviv. <laughs> Horrifying footage. A small number of Jews and Israelis were reportedly left isolated by the enraged mob. One group even tried to break into what appears to be a secure staff area of the airport. And when they finally got inside, you can see a terrified woman in a hijab wave her hands as she tells the angry mob, there are no Israelis here. And just like that, they moved on. Mm. What if there was Israelis in there? Outside, they continued their search, even trying to flip a security car on the airport tarmac. The Jerusalem Post is reporting one rioter could be heard saying, quote, we are here for the Jews. We came to kill them with the knives and shoot at them. Morgan, it's difficult for me to even say those words, let alone imagine the fear and abject terror of those poor Israelis and Jews that were in that situation. This yeah. is patently unacceptable. Are you okay? It's really hard to be a Jewish parent right now. I'm sorry. I thought about you this week and too, Harris, when I saw this, because your husband is Jewish, and, and, you know, whenever Hitler was going after the Nazis, they didn't care if your kids were half Jewish. No. And I thought about you as I was thinking about coming to Outnumbered, and I thought they would go after my daughter, they would go after yours as quickly as, as they would mine. And it's, it's just terrifying to be a Jewish parent right now. You know, oh, wow. I'm sorry. Um, I, think, I think about all those I love from the Jewish faith every day and in my prayers. And, and my biggest prayer is that we don't become anesthetized or blind to what's unfolding before our eyes. We haven't seen the hunting of Jews. And if you could translate all of it, and I've looked at a transcript here from Dagestan, it's hunting, it's catch them, it's what Emily... Mm -hmm. it, I, it's hard to say. Emily is so right about what they wanted to do, and they were screaming it. Proudly screaming it. And I think about that one Arab woman. I mean, what, what if there had been Israelis in there? That's a great question. But right. what if there were and she helped? I have all the hope in the world that it's not going to be everybody against the Jews again. Well, I, I know this time, you know, it's funny. I know this time very clearly who would hide us and who would watch us go by. You know, like Doug, uh, I'm a reservist, so I, I apologize, everybody. I've been up for like no, four or five days apologize. a row at 5 a.m., so I'm a little tired, but. You know, Doug, I, I just and, and you're such a you know a person of faith and, and appreciate what you do in the reserves as well. The one thing I thought through all of this is I'm going to teach her to fight. You know, I'm, I'm wearing my star wow. of David. I'm not taking it off. I'm not going to hide. And that's what I'm going to teach my daughter. And as much as I look at these college campuses and I look right here in New York City, that. You know, kids not much older than her had to barricade themselves in a library, had to be escorted yep. out of the back. This is happening in America. And I said this to a friend over the weekend. It is, we are not protected. We are not immune from this uh, in America. 
you know, we often at, at our temple, and I'm sure at many churches, we have had security for a long time. Mm -hmm. We've had to up our security. We've had to cancel some events. But the only thing I can tell to, you know, to everybody watching is this is why, and Lisa just said it so eloquently in the last segment, this is why we have to fight them. This is why, you know, I just, I, I refuse not to wear Jewish symbols. I refuse to try and hide our identity and who we are. I, I will not do that in America. And around the world, Jews are being forced to do that. And so thank you for what you said, Lisa. No. And this is why Israel has to exist. Exactly. I mean, this is why we yeah. have to protect Israel. I mean, look at what these people want to do to Jews around the world. I mean, they said, we are here for the Jews. We came to kill them with knives and to shoot them. The people out supporting this, even in the streets of America and in Congress, the Hamas cockers, they support terrorism. They just support yeah. the destruction and the death of Jews. That's what we have. We have to be honest about this conversation. Instead, you have some in the media pushing Hamas propaganda from the Gaza Health Ministry, which is Hamas, yes. right? Or even dis defending the Palestinians. When you look at even 2021, where the majority of Palestinians supported Hamas, that is their government, okay? So I, I think part of what is healthy in this and part of what we have to do in the media particularly is just be honest about all, all of right. this, right? To tell the truth, to call out what is evil, and this is evil, yeah. what is happening in America. And we, we can't blank it over. We can't talk about the plight of what's happening in Gaza. We talk about the plight of 1,400 Israelis that were murdered in cold blood, equivalent to 48,000 Americans here. I, I, I'm, it's madness. It's disgusting. It's evil. If we're in a battle of good versus evil right now. If you're equivocating right now, and we've talked about this in our country, if it's, it's in Chicago, we've been to Jewish groups a lot and have to go through security, but we talk about never forget. Bull. We've got a whole group of Americans right now that are forgetting. They're forgetting why Israel exists. They're forgetting what happened to the Jewish people, and they're seeing it right here. This is not a movie. What happened up the street in this, in this library was not a, a depiction. It was real. And here's the part that bothers me the most right now. In, in these thugs of Hamas, period, thugs of Hamas who draped, pillaged, and plundered, Palestinian people, different, the thugs that are running this need to understand that all they understand is force. So for us to have multiple uh, attacks on our basis and we respond by hitting a warehouse, Biden, it's time to step it up. It's time to be more than just talk. It's time to make sure that this is not good on all over the world. You know, as we discuss this, I think about as everyone is watching, you know, the question is, what can everyone do? Call your congressperson. Let them know in stark contrast to Representative Jayapal, which said the president doesn't represent many of Americans. Yeah. You call them and tell them what you want them to, and how you want them to represent. It is an abomination that the only countries that stood with the U.S. at the U.N. in condemning these attacks were Austria, the Czechoslovakia and the Czech Republic and Croatia. And, and Croatia said, it was a Croatia or the Czech Republic that said we should leave the UN because this is absolutely unacceptable that the UN is simply wanting to, to support a ceasefire and not condemning it for these hateful attacks that they are. Because when we stand quiet, when we don't stand vocally in solidarity with the Jewish people who represent our own, then this is what will happen. That someday That's we'll right. be left with the world saying never forget instead of saying no, it stops right now. Right here. Yeah, definitely. It, you know what? I would just add this. It will be the Jews today, and it will be the rest of us tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And we know that because when Mashal, the former leader of Hamas, put out that all call three weeks, three Fridays ago, and said, get in the streets and protest, and anything you can do on your own, well, we know what he meant. Mm -hmm. um, that was for Jews, that was for Christians, and that was for something called soft Arabs. I suppose those would be the ones who might help others mm -hmm. or not shoot others. Mm -hmm. um, we are all in play here. And as Emily says, we cannot remain silent. And I won't. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.